Okay. <laughs> well, I'm really grateful uh, to be greeting you here today from the Coast Salish territory of the Musqueam and Tsleil-Waututh and Squamish nations here in British Columbia. And um, welcome. Thank you so much for being here with me. And I really appreciate your support. Lord knows there's many other things you could have been doing today. <laughs> and I really do appreciate that you're here. And it's Literacy Month in September. So at least here in Vancouver. Um, so um, I would like to start with a poem. I'm reading these. I don't have them all memorized. Um, and this, I'll just do a little setup. <laughs> you find that funny, Halima? Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, I can't memorize anything. <laughs> this, uh, and you might like to mute yourself too. I don't. Okay. So, this poem is called Be Thou, Be Not Thou Blinded by It. And it's from the 25th of October, 2013. So, you know, in autumn, where in a flash of fierce sunlight pierces through fog at 4 p.m., just before sunset. That, my friend, is my heart's love for you, not taken for granted, not for one season. This one is called Light Sky. Today, a cloud of butterflies flew up from within me, and I, caught by delight, caught as many of them as I could, writing them down with the colors in their wings to release them again on a word page. I am in grace. This one is quite recent. It's from the 15th of September. And it's called Lynx. L-I, not the animal, L-I-N-K-S. Lynx. The alchemy of language, formulations of sound within, without, expressions of feeling scribed. Who hears the meaning and how it is colored by the soul's mosaic evaporate, and evaporating tile, a watery uprising, sanguine or not, thought or impulse penned on canvas, celebrate one's being in no particular order, alive as long as autumn leaves. These little poems are one minute long or less, and I call them in a collection of trinketry. You know when you have one of those old fashioned um, jewelry cases that has, when you open the lid, it has all different kinds of compartments and levels? and you find things in there that maybe need repair or maybe you can wear or, and so these are my trinketries collection, little ones. They'll be interspersed throughout. This one is from the 17th of March, 2007. Now I'm in a writing group and we met at UBC in the course of Professor Dr. Marlene A. Shiwi. And the course was 
Your Life as Story. It was a memoir writing course. And we formed a group, five of us. Two of us have published properly, and the others haven't yet. And and we I named us the Story Sisters, and they liked that. So this is uh, about being with my Story Sisters. There are many, but this one I like. Story Sisters. The wall clock ticking our time together in Myrna's main room. Fireplace watching with its warmth in this trusting scene of writing women writing. Now this one is called Undue Influence. It's uh, to do with a kind of a mixture of, of my understanding of when you're expecting a child, you be careful. You must be careful what it is you're doing, not just physically and not having alcohol for fetal alcohol syndrome, but all kinds of other things and influences. And so I hope this isn't too rough. Undue influence is also recent from the 15th of September. They told her, the Queen, of their findings about Anthony A.J. as requested, results of a sanctioned search, intelligence on Margaret's betrothed, Andrew in utero, and there you have it, as Lindsay would say, the deed, the seed is done. And you, tut tut, expect the monarch's second son to behave? I was saddened to hear earlier on that there are pine trees burning. And I love the soil and I love being in places where pine and birch grow. Perhaps this manor where you are in Bavaria, you've got that going. But if there's a dryness to the climate, which of course contributes to the fires, but also it's part of my growing up. And so this little piece is from April 2009, 2nd of April, and it's called Northern Nose. Deeply intake, air of the north, diaphragm out, filling up with fresh wood smoke air, cold, but hint of spring in its pine perfume. Somehow on this Vancouver April afternoon, my nostrils open, pull in the smoky scent, go for more. Perhaps it's time to travel home. And in fact, that summer I did go on a road trip with another friend who was raised in Wichita, Kansas, and her father came to our place at Summit Lake. He had other property further north, and he met my father, and they were both motor dealers. And um, they, they had a property, a lot of land, in Summit Lake eventually. And we kind of grew up together, although this friend is quite a bit older than I am. And I don't think we could attempt such a road trip now. But we were invited to stay in the guest cottage at Summit Lake of 
a friend and we and it was a real gift and the thing is we went to a place called hunter creek to have brunch on the way and then we had to go through a lot of tunnels on the camp for the um, british columbia highway system and before we could get through the first tunnel there was a long long lineup and there were all these classic cars they were going to 100 mile house they were going to be having a a rally or something you know a show and we just felt our father's presence there so much in this road trip in 2009 on the way to summit lake it was quite a gift these two daughters of motor dealers who had property at summit lake in the north and there's plenty of pine there lodgepole pine especially So this little poem, it was in my, what they call a teaser in Sika, Subud. Um, and it's from recent times. It's a trinketry piece. And it's called Destination. There's a certain way into a childhood memory, a season viscosity of the air, scent, sound, and story, from which the only way out is through a dream. Now, how am I for time? I don't want to go over my time. Five to 10 minutes. I have what, how many? So five to 10 minutes, depending. Five to 10 just more, gone. okay. Yeah. So um, I also mentioned when Andrew Hall interviewed me for the promo piece about blending memoir and poetry. And the, I suppose this could be one of the poemoir genre that I made up. <laughs> and um, I was born on Kane Island, and that's in the North Pacific. And um, I don't know if you, any of you know the story of Metterlink or Metterlink's writing. A long, long time ago, last century, you can look him up. Anyway, he had a story called The Bluebird of Happiness, and it was made into a film with Shirley Temple. And Shirley Temple uh, and her little brother, I think it was, go off in the forest and they go on an adventure looking for the bluebird of happiness. And in that film, they come to a place that's called, the oh, and they visit the souls of their grandparents. They, they go to their grandparents and have a nice time connecting. So the grandparents have gone long ago, but anyway, it's a bit fanciful. And in that film, the part that struck me was when they get to the land of the unborn children. It's quite spectacular if you ever get to see it, the concept of it. And uh, there's this place where the characters are dressed in classic sort of Greek uh, togas and robes and short ones and long ones and and there's one girl who's waiting for her parents to stop buying furniture so she can be born and just join the family and there's another one who's uh, a couple they're they're inseparable a boy and girl and it happens that the next day when the boat comes to take the soul down to earth that um it, it they have to be separated and that causes great distress so this is called homecoming because it's based on when i turned 75 last year i decided i had an indication early in the spring that i would make a pilgrimage to cane island where i was born and there is the city of prince rupert 
but it's on an island called Cane Island. Homecoming. Ibu Siti Rahayu told me it was true. On a late 1990s Easter afternoon in Wismasubud, Ibu said, it was a true experience and your inner knows that. The piano playing other Ibu, Insia, sitting beside me, had put up her hand saying, Susilawati has a question. So as briefly and quietly as ever possible, I began. In the Metterlink Bluebird of Happiness style of the land of the unborn children, there I was. Waiting my turn to come to earth and be born. There was quite a queue. My soul was at the far end. Of a sudden, I was queue jumped and my being was brought forward speedily as though I was sent, as it were, at the last minute. Indeed, as I was sped through the spheres, clouds and air, down to the port of Prince Rupert, into the back of the hospital on the hill, through the window, into the delivery room, through the top of my mother's body to be born through the womb and canal of birth. Last minute, again, indeed. This experience had by me in the mid-1980s gave my mother goosebumps when I had her listen to my tale. My parents married 78 years ago today. I arrived 75 years ago, 4th August, 1944. But we moved to Prince George when I was one year old. The detail of the location of the delivery room, its window, the hill, slope on which the hospital stood, had mum inhale swiftly through her teeth at the telling. Now we are starting our descent to Digby Island, to the airport. I again, with the encumbrances of earth, in this Boeing 400 seat 8A in the eighth month on the 8th of August anniversary of mum and dad's wedding anniversary, descend in body through the clouds into the port of Prince Rupert. Earthbound today in a heavy carrier, I fulfill my indication of visiting my birth city in my 75th year. Amen. This was written on the 8th of August on 2019, last year, at, in the airplane. <laughs> How my timing is. How's my time? One, one, one more and then we start with the question and answer. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, a trinketry. Okay. I wanted to know how many minutes I had because I timed all these. <laughs> it's okay. Three to five. Um, That's good. Yes. This is a Canadian poem for my Canadian friends. It's from the 21st of February, 2007. And um, every day on the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, CBC, we have uh, a time counter at 10 a.m. And it says, at the beginning of the long dash, and then there's technological sounds, it's 10 a.m., right? So this poem is called at the beginning of the long dash, a Canadian poem. Oh, Canada, 
borders, boundaries, without and within. Boat people with no compass set out to conquer blockades to their freedom from far and wide. Oh, Canada. We, some but not all, stand on guard for thee. Escape oppression, borders, boundaries, from without and within. Inner guidance, 10 seconds, is not in the notwithstanding clause. Clause its way out of the following phrase. At the beginning of the long dash. A little trinket tree to end on. This is called continuum. Whether or not you have finished your chores, the earth and seasons turn. Thank you, garden, for your lessons. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. So you may all unmute yourself and just give a short sign if you want to ask a question to Fusila Wati. I don't think everyone got the idea about unmuting themselves. Leanna's raising her hand. Yes, um, I, I really love the poem of the land of the unborn children. That was it oh. just so moving. So it was stupendous. Yeah. It moved me to try to write my own uh, travels through uh, to arriving on Earth. Um, I wondered, it, it seemed like you referred to something in the beginning which I didn't get. Was, is there a, um, a place called that? Is there a, a play that you saw? You were talking about the long and short well, togas. In the setup, I was talking about the film called The Bluebird of Happiness. That I didn't catch. Okay, thank you. That, it was a film. Yeah, and it's yeah. based on a story um, yeah. of Metalink, but it was ho Hollywoodized, if you know what I mean. Yes. I wonder who the Foley artists were on that film. <laughs> I'm okay, in the thank Foley you. artist group. Yeah. The Bluebird of Happiness. It's an older, quite a bit older it, film. Oh, Shirley Temple was a young girl. It was before Pretty they were worried about how to keep her career going because she was okay. aging out of that cuteness. Okay. Thank you. I'll try to find it. That really moved me. Thank you well, so much. It's an, it was an experience that I had, and I had told Iguincia, who was sitting there with me, and we were all sitting quietly uh, with Ibu Rahayu and her accompanist. And it was Easter Sunday and was Masubud, and I, I, I was forced to tell the story after she said, Sustilawadi has a question. So, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so you had that experience in Latihan or a dream or a receiving of you entering your of, mother's body? Um, when I had that experience in the 1980s, it was, um, I, it was a kind of a cross between a dream and, um, and a, a Latihan experience. And for those who aren't in Suba, the Latihan is a spiritual exercise. I do with uh, the others. Um, and so, yeah, so, but it was a real thing. And of course, it was confirmed by Ibu Rahayu that my inner knew that it was real. Mm -hmm. So that was really special. And um, the other thing I was going to say when you were asking about that, but maybe someone else has something to ask me. If I remember it, I'll go back to you, Deanna. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think oh, I know what it was. Uh, one year old. I had no idea what the old hospital looked like in Prince Rupert and how it stood on the place, on the slope. Mm. 
and it's now not there. Like when I went there last year for my pilgrimage and stayed with my cousin, who's been the mayor three times, um, he said, oh no, that building's gone long ago. And I went three trips to the archives as well, straightening them out. They had uh, Janice Harper, who's on the call today from Nanaimo. They had her grandpa and my grandpa as brothers because they both had the same surname. So I straightened that out. Mm. And um, uh, nice. she gave me pencil and gloves and everything. Yeah, but so that's why my mother sucked the wood the air in through her teeth because she couldn't figure out how I knew where the hospital was uh -huh. but it was from my experience that I knew and my mother is a cousin a first cousin to Janice who's on uh -huh. the call today yes. thank you Sophia thank you wanted to say something yes um a very short uh, comment that I love the light sky and the image of the cloud of butterflies. I think that yes. was extremely effective. Loved it. Thank you for your feedback, Sophia. I enjoyed your reading a few weeks ago as well. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Richard? I hope uh, it's Theo, yes. actually. I keep trying to fix that, but not. It, oh. Richard's my old Subu name, Theo or Theodore. Is Theodore, my okay. Subud name. Theodore. <laughs> <clears throat> well, just a couple of comments and then a question. There were two poems that really struck me, or uh, what did you call them? They're your Rick. Rick um, trinketry? Trinketry, yeah. Um, I guess these were short ones. One was about being amongst the women who write. Yeah. And you talked about fire and warmth and and the feeling of trust among you. And somehow that all fit together. And it painted a picture for me that I really liked. And then <clears throat> a, a little bit later, you referred to, among other things, pine for fume and cold with a hint of spring with a with the hint of spring and some other imagery of being out in the forest in the late winter, early spring. And that too felt very vivid and um, put me right there. My oh, question is you. just about what is the long dash that you referred to? I believe it was oh, in yeah. the last poem. Okay, so if you go to on your computer mm -hmm. at, uh, at nine, uh, go to cbc.ca and okay. you can um, download an app called um, onto your computer or your phone called uh, GEM, G-E-M, or just the CBC Listen app, the CBC Listen uh -huh. app. And you will, have, huh. um, you will have access to uh, tune in at 9.50 and get ready and then just before the program ends, the 10 a.m. news comes on. It's been all my life and all the lives since the CBC was born. It's our mm. version of the BBC, but it's the CBC. Right. And, and so I'm a big radio listener. I have a, ra a real radio in every room. And um, I, <laughs> I don't listen through technology. I listen to from a real radio that I have to adjust. Yeah, so uh, I do. I do listen to CBC Listen though sometimes if I with my cell phone. But so at the sound of the long dash, it will be 10 a.m. Have that experience, Theo. Mm -hmm. So it's the sound. It refers to yeah. a sound. Maybe maybe a, like yeah. a dash in Morse code versus a dot. Maybe maybe I don't know about the words no, or something like that. Yeah, kind of a big yeah. Yeah, Wayne knows about it. Yeah, what? <laughs> it's something to set your clock or watch to at ten o'clock. I see. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Susila Wadi. Thank you, Theo.
I think Halima wants to say something. Halima, please. So uh, I, I, I was really very moved by the, the unborn child and your experience. Uh, I've had a couple similar experiences and it makes me want to go write them down. So it's very, very nice. And uh, and then I like the I like the uh, the dash you know this thing we were just talking about I liked when you started to sing Oh Canada so I I'm assuming what you're getting at is this dash triggers some kind of a Canadian feeling of uh, the country and and some of the artifacts of the country so I thought it was really lovely and I was appreciating your singing thank you well that that's the first line of our yeah. national anthem uh-huh right and I had an experience once of being in a congress on Canada Day in California uh -huh. and I went to my room and I looked up whatever thing there was maybe it was television and I stood at attention and sang Oh Canada <laughs> in my room. Good. Good. <laughs> well, that's sort of the way it made me feel, that poem, you know. Uh -huh. I could feel that, that, that loyalty and, and pride in your country. It was great. Well, the other, the other time it happened was when I was in Scotland at the Braemar Games. And for some reason, they... Uh, played O Canada there, and I guess we we're members of the Commonwealth, but I don't know. Or may I know there was a visiting military band from Ottawa. Uh huh. <laughs> and and the Queen Mother, on whose birthday I was born, uh, was there as well. She was alive, and um, mm. that was in 1991 when I went up to Scotland to the Braemar Games, and uh, yeah, it. I've I've only to thank God for that, those experiences because I didn't have to ask anyone if they were true or not. I knew. <laughs> that was great. That's one. <laughs> the Queen Mother that I now know from King's Speech and from The Crown, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. But if you look up real pictures of her, and Megan was born on the fourth of August as well. Who's Megan? Prince Harry's Megan. Oh, okay. So there's a great bunch of us, and uh, Marie Jose, the late Queen of Italy, and lots of us. Uh, oh. uh, Louis Vuitton, uh, Maurice Richard, famous hair hockey player in Canada, all on the 4th of August. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> I've, I have a Facebook album called Born on the 4th of August. <laughs> <laughs> and there's pictures of all those people. Melvin Douglas and oh, not anyone, not anyone I'd particularly want to be associated with, but they were born that day. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Melvin Douglas was a very fine actor. Yeah, uh -huh. very fine. No, it's, it was really wonderful, and I really I enjoyed this pine tree so much. Yeah, that really that that poem really uh, well was uh, I could really smell it, and the scent was just uh, present. Wonderful. Well, it's oh. interesting. I have I thank you for that. I have pine boughs. They're all brown and rusty colored. Oh. I should have them right here to show you. <laughs> and they're from Summit Lake from 2009. Yeah. I brought them home. And if the wind blows the right way, they still give off their perfume. Oh. Mm. Mm. Wonderful. Even uh, though they're all dried and rusty colored. Yeah. And I love the cavalcade, the cavalcade of the old cars. For, oh. when you, yeah, I love that. That's great. 
That was incredible. And Ben Belford's um, shop was in Wichita, Kansas, his, his motor dealership. And my yeah. dad's was in Prince George, British Columbia, pre-pulp mill Prince George, when the air was fresh and sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Theodore, I saw your hand. Well, this is probably an, an, an association known only to me amongst this group, maybe not. The first four notes of the notes that you sang from O Canada are the first four notes of a marvelous piece by Paul Hindemith, a great 20th century composer. He wrote a long, I'm not sure what to call it, a maybe almost a cantata based on Walt Whitman's poem, When Lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed and it well, opens it, with those same four notes and it's quite it has very much gravitas it's really it's kind of when it goes down it goes down another whole step so the, there's a fifth note kind of takes you away from that but it really starts off this long piece with this long poem very portentously well, I'm really Very powerful interested in my imagination, anyway. Uh, well, I'm interested, and I'm typing. I'm leaning forward here to type my writing address in um, the chat, so you can send send me that information if you don't mind. Because no, I don't I, mind. I'm an INFJ in Myers Briggs, so I keep different email addresses for different topics. I can't stand mixed topics on an inbox because it doesn't go with my. <laughs> so I, have I, can't either. I can't either, but I can't do anything about it. <laughs> yes, I have folders yeah. within those different email addresses too. But I put my writing email address in okay. the chat. So if you want to send me a reference yes. to anything that comes after this, uh, I appreciate it, and um, that's it's it's different than my Subud one is work and worship at yahoo.ca, but my writing one is susilawati underscore bryant at yahoo.ca, not dot com. Right. I'm just I'm just wondering if any of your writings have been published, or do you have any chat books or? Anywhere one could find your poetry? That's a, a big challenge because when we moved to Prince George, we moved into a 10 room Dutch colonial house. And then we had to unceremoniously leave it when I was about 13. And um, people who know me closely know that I have a lot of um, historical baggage in boxes. <laughs> uh, and file folders and now i've got them down to those little folding envelopes right that uh, the accordion style instead of the uh, boxes. Right. So, so that's good it is a goal of mine but um um yeah i'm not do no, you I'm sometimes not yet do you share them on subu uh subu creative i think a, a facebook site uh very rarely mm -hmm. very rarely um yes but I was very grateful to have Emmanuel ask me if I would like to take part in this today, back in July or whenever it was. And uh, yeah, so thank you very, very much for everybody's time in being mm -hmm. here because the world is so full right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. And, so I just uh, want to... No, I'm just saying ever since COVID-19 came, for those who believe in it, I felt like nah, I, I, never happened. <laughs> I, um, I felt like I, I don't know why all his friends around. died, but yeah, well I just felt as though I'm being choreographed and so when I go out anywhere, I'm mindful of my role in terms of how far and how close and everything like that. So um, it's partly being a, a water ballerina in my past. Wow. You, know, you have a certain way. And Donna from Ireland, that's amazing. What time is it there? Um, 10 wow. to 8 in the evening. 
Right. Mm. We're an hour behind Germany. Yeah, it's almost 9 p.m. now. Bavaria. Yes. So, we still, we still have Bavaria. A daylight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, it's, it's pitch dark in Germany now. I just was going to say, so we have the intention, the plan also to publish uh, all poetry uh, in Sika. So first maybe uh, online and then maybe we, we even will be able to have a real book from it. Wow. Emmanuel is also uh, thinking about that. So, so that's Excellent. the plan. <laughs> yeah, it's really uh, to, to bring the, uh, them together and to really be able to reread them and have them. So thank you so much, Lucila Wati. Thank you for um, asking me. And next. Thanks everybody for coming. Thank you.